Hello, Beauty News family. Welcome to this week's episode of Beauty News. This yep. is 22nd of February edition. We're going to be discussing new beauty releases yes. uh, that have released recently. In the or, past week. Yes, or updates on things that we've discussed in the past. Correct. So, we have seen a little bit more about the new Charlotte Tilbury, the Icon palette. Yes. So, this is a limited edition eyeshadow palette. It's going to be £55 and available online from the 28th of February. Uh, you can sign up for like a launch thing to be notified yep. if you want to do that. And we've also seen swatches. We have seen swatches. Now, along with that palette, there are new lip products as well. So these are also limited edition, I believe. So they're called Latex Love Liquid Lipsticks, and there are six shades. You can see them swatched here. They also have that sort of limited edition, um, what is in its mouth? A lipstick, and there's a lightning bolt. <laughs> I had no idea. What, I was like, that is very phallic. No, I think it's a lipstick bullet. It is definitely a lipstick bullet. You can see it a little bit better on the actual lipsticks or the liquid lipsticks themselves. So they have the those lips with that lipstick bullet uh, on the on the caps. Yeah, but you've got some sort of basic shades, sort of four more nudie shades, a red and then like a dark red. And those are £24 each, our limited edition. I'm going to ask you a question. What do you mm. think of this palette? I don't want it. <laughs> no, I don't want it either. But do you, this reminds me of so many palettes that have already released. Yeah. Um, there are like, I was thinking, I'm like, where have I seen this before? And it, you know, the Becca Volcano Goddess one? Yeah. I am also getting vibes of the, was it? Oh. Dose of Colors? Yeah. The yeah. Cadian uh, Desi. Desi, the Friend, second. Friendication? Yeah. 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 There's a lot. So yeah. this is this was sort of like the color story of last year. You have like the neutrals, the warms, and then the pop of blue. Um, but yeah, we'll put some, if, if you've got any of those palettes, you probably don't need this one. Yeah. I think it's good that Charlotte Tilbury are adding a little bit more color into yeah. their range for those people who like it. Um, yeah. But, but it's probably not going to bring too many new people. No, in, I it's, don't think. it's not going to, um, it's not going to make me part with my money. True. Well, that's a shocker. Yeah. Everything else is new. Oh, look, there's... Okay, we'll, we'll give it one. One. So, ages ago, we saw Victoria Beckham talking about releasing a makeup range. Mm -hmm. um, and she did a little video on her Instagram account saying that Victoria Beckham Beauty is launching later this year. So, that is definitely coming. Um, that's a quick... That's just a quick update on something we spoke about sometime last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, okay, Anastasia Beverly Hills. We've got a couple of things here. Um, let's start with what they released for Valentine's Day <clears throat> on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Fair. That's great. Um, I would like to do a little shout out to uh, Cult Beauty. I ordered the Hourglass valentine's day duo mm -hmm. and it arrived the day before valentine's day that's how we do a valentine's day release that's fair okay if only that those sets came more worldwide yeah because they were really hard to find they were so hard to get super cool but hard we, to find. we fought to the death for those ones we did um but back to anastasia beverly hills they released uh glitters for valentine's day um which is exciting. And they're only available online as well. So yes. it's not as if you could... Like, to be fair, a lot of people that are buying these products, you're buying them for yourself. Absolutely. And if you're having a particularly bad Valentine's Day, you yeah. might go, I want some retail yeah. therapy. That's fair. But if you wanted to wear these on Valentine's Day, you're shit out it, of luck. It's, you are shit out of luck. Um, so there were six individual glitters in there. These were $15 each. Or still are. They're still available. Uh, Cupid, Locket, Adore, Aphrodite, Bisu, and Charmed. There was also the glitter adhesive for $18 US dollars. And a heart-shaped box, um, which I kind of like the little play on words there. With yes, the Nirvana. very Nirvana. Yes. I like uh, it. So this was $60 US dollars, and it contained the full collection of of uh, the six individual glitters, a glitter adhesive, and a Sugarfina candy. By the way, Sugarfina candy, very delicious. Oh, very um, good. I think what got me about this, um, like I, I've been saying a little bit recently, um, you know, Valentine's Day collections should be released 
well in advance mm-hmm. so we can have the Valentine's Day themes themed items for Valentine's Day. Um, and when I saw that one of these loose glitters are love hearts in different sizes, I was like... When are you going to use that? Other than... You wouldn't even use it on a Valentine's Day. Some people might. <laughs> Some, Some people, people might. might. But I, I feel like if it was ever going to be something that you would use... If you don't usually use glitter all that much, it's going to be on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Um, or if you're sort of like you've got an Instagram account and you want to do yep. a Valentine's Day sparkly yep. look, yep. like, okay, hold on to these for next year. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I don't know. I think the deal was not too bad. Yeah. Um, I don't know. These Are these not permanent products? They're still available. I wonder, are they just going to be phased out when they start selling out? Because yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. $15 US for glitter each glitter thing and then if you're international you're paying 15 us dollars yeah. for shipping no it's 17 isn't it i think it's like 1750 or yeah. something yeah all of a sudden those are very expensive glitters. that's a lot so you can go elsewhere to you find can your get glitters. Some, some of the most beautiful glitters really cheap too. yeah yeah mm. i agree this was a weird one i uh, do think the heart shape box is super pretty though yeah like i mm, it'd be a nice gift yeah for valentine's yeah. day or like a nice storage piece it's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty uh the another thing that they have announced and this is hasn't released yet um it's coming to the anastasia beverly hills websites the us and the uk websites on the 4th of march and also in stores starting the 7th of march so it's new news um but this is their first brow launch in three years which is crazy because that's what put anastasia beverly hills on the map yeah and now it's like people forget that they started with brow products Mm. and focused they went like their glow kits and then their eyeshadow palettes and their liquid lipsticks and their lip glosses so all of a sudden they've sort of you know, redefined what they they are known for, but they did start with brow products and yep. that's how they got on the map. They started the block brow, Insta brow, Insta brow kind of trend. Yeah. Um, but the product is the dip brow gel. So it's a full coverage matte gel that's waterproof, long wearing and comes in 11 shades. So this is supposed to, it's sort of like a mix between their dip brow pomade and a tinted gel. So it's just a higher coverage tinted gel. Um, and it's supposed to pair with like all existing brow products. So, you know, if you prefer to fill in your brows with a powder, Mm. you can always put this over the top for a little bit more coverage. Um, but what I like about this, besides that it comes in 11 shades and I haven't seen too many swatches of them, but if we found anything we'll put on the screen, but they're coming in two sizes. I love, I love this. I love that. I think this is such a good move and I want to see more brands do it. So the full size is 4.4 grams of product. It's $18. Or the mini is 2.2 grams and is $9. So not only are they like proportion, which is great because I love the idea of minis, but I can't stand that often a mini is like you get a third of the product, but you're paying half the price. Like, you know know what I mean? Like it's better value to always go the bigger one. But this one, the value is the same. And if you've ever tried to pan a brow gel, oh god, it will take you me. two years. So I don't want to do it yeah. <laughs> ever again. So I think this is great because you can, you know, if you like a darker brow in winter and a lighter brow in summer, whatever it might be, you can have a couple and yeah. you know that they won't necessarily go off. So I think yeah. this, that's probably the best thing they've done from I think, this launch. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic. I also like the concept of the product. I think this would be fantastic for people who have brows but there's not a lot of color yes. going on there. Yeah. Um, so this is like, this is common. I see it a lot with um, ladies who are a little bit older mm-hmm. um, and have fair hair. Like my mum, when her brows are not tinted, she literally looks like she has no brows. Yes. Uh, and it's because the the hairs are basically transparent or yes. gray. So you can't really see them. So I think that would be fantastic. Um, I also think that this is potentially fun and they could expand this color range into colored brow products yeah that could and be if cool. it's full coverage that could be fun that could be fun and if you had like you know really fair hair or bleached yeah. brows you can go in with cool pastel yeah. colors and stuff yeah. really easily um 
For me, I am the kind of person that needs to fill in my brows because I have yeah. very sparse brow hair. Yeah. So this does nothing for it's, me. Yeah, it's not going to be for everyone. No. And so, you know, but it's a good addition to the range. And yeah. I have heard people say, this isn't for me, so what? who cares? But it's it's a good addition to yeah. an existing quite well padded out range. Yeah. So I think, you know. I that, would try this. If I was making an order on ABH, yeah. I would chuck a small one in the cart to try it out. Fair. So, yeah. I wouldn't, but... That's fair too. But that's because <laughs> it would highlight the patchiness of <laughs> yeah, that. I fair. don't need someone pointing that's that fair. out to me. I already know. A um, little bit of brand coming to Oz News. Besame. They're going to be stopped at Makeup Net Australia. Now, Makeup Net used to have a brick and mortar store in Mooney yes. Ponds. But they have uh, closed down. They closed it down last year, I believe. Yeah, it was So it's a shame recently. that we're not going to be able to wander on in there and check it out um but it will be easily accessible within australia they are going to be stocking the snow white 1937 collection which (laughs) i'm just gonna say this has been out for over a year yeah it has and that was delayed 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 and now it's been out for yeah about 18 months Mm -hmm. interesting um i do want to say though that i remember the first time I came across Besame, they were stocked in Australia. They were, yes. So I don't know what happened there. Don't know. But I went to a trade show. No, it wasn't even a trade show. It was just like a beauty expo thing um, in Carlton. What's that exhibition center in Carlton Gardens? And there was a Besame stand. So right. there, it was in the, the market. It yeah. might still be here. Yeah. But there's another It's definitely source. not easy to friggin' no, find. No, no. That's fair. Um, but yeah, that. There we go. If there we you go. want your best, May, you know where to find it. Awesome. Coming soon. All right, we've got another palette that's been released from Bobby Brown. Last week we talked about this cool tone, movie sort of nude one, and this is the Molten Drama. So mm. based on the name, you can tell that it's pretty much all metallic, give or take a couple. Yep. Um, this, look, the more I look at this, the more I'm interested in Me it. Me too. Me yeah, too. Yeah, it's sort of... Do you know what gets me? Shade mm. number nine. Yeah, I know. Shade number four and number nine get me. But also six, um, looks, six good. looks great. And uh, yeah, I look. I don't hate it. I don't hate it look, either. Look, I've tried Bobby Brown eyeshadows and they are hit and miss. Mm. I do want to say from experience, they don't swatch well, but they often apply Pli- nicely. Yes, yeah. So if you swatch it in store and you're like, mm, this doesn't look very good. Trust me, with a brush, a it's lot of the different. mattes and stuff just apply a lot nicer. Yeah. But I found historically their shimmers are a lot more sheer than other brands. But I'm interested in trying this because if it's molten drama, you would think that the colors should pack a punch. Yeah. Um, but I think this is a really nice balanced spring looking palette. And it is sort of like they've got steel orchid and white flame and lost treasure. And like it sounds like it might try to be more of a spring release. Yeah. Um, but I'll definitely swatch this in store. It looks really interesting. Yeah, so would I. I, I don't hate it. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit interested. Yeah, I'm interested too. But this is now available, uh, Sephora US, for $59. US. Cool. Um, and they're supposed to, it's supposed to feature five of their new chrome metal eyeshadows infused with color-shifting pearls. Mm. So should be... Mo- multi-chrome effect. Oh, my God. Probably just duochrome, but... Yeah, yeah. We know, I've got to swatch number nine. We know how brands get their descriptions. A they get bit. they get too excited. They, they do. They take liberties. They do. They uh, do. Yes. Hello. <laughs> That's true. Very true. Um, from Clarins, we have a new range. This is the My Clarins range, and this is actually targeted at a younger demographic. So this is Clarins' attempt at focusing on. The younger generation. Yes, to get them in. Which is fair because I think Clarins, maybe when we were growing up, I remember Clarins ads and skincare ads being in magazines. Yep. Like Dolly magazine and Mm -hmm. stuff. And then I think all of a sudden they haven't been targeting the youth market. They've just been riding the wave of... Okay, those people turned into professionals and yeah, they still and now need they're skincare. Buying, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think they've realised that they really need to target they do, the younger. They do, yeah. And I, I think, like, you know, it's been a long time coming because, yeah. like you said, they 
they were a prominent brand when I was much younger. Mm-hmm. Um, and even like my mum used to use Clarins. Yeah. I used Clarins growing up and like, yeah. So look, it's here. Um, so essentially what they've done is they've created um, a vegan cruelty free line. They have said that this range will not be made available in any market that requires animal testing. So that includes South America and China. Um, it's available now from Clarence and Alta in the US, and I'm sure it's going to roll out in other places. Um, they're trying to use green packaging, um, you know, with the recyclable components and sustainable um, cardboard that's made from collecting from sustainable forests. Uh, but essentially, the line includes the clear out targeted treatment gel. Uh, 20 US dollars, the recharge relaxing sleep mask, $27, remove purifying cleansing gel and micellar cleansing milk, they are both $20. There's a reboost hydrating cream in a mattifying, comforting, and refreshing variation. There's a refresh hydrating mist for $20, and the poreless blur and matte stick for 19 US dollars, and the moisturizers are 25 US dollars. So I think this is a good move from Clarins, um, and I think these products look good. I just think, look, I think the fact that they are not shipping them or they're not selling them in markets that test on animals is great, but it sort of defeats the purpose when the brand that is still testing on animals with their other products gets the profits. Mm. I feel like that's a little bit like paying lip service. It is paying lip service. Absolutely. So I think, I don't know where people are going to stand with this. Yeah. Uh, if you're really, really strict, cruelty free, I, I don't think this is going to fly. No. But if you are a little bit lenient, like, I think oh, there are, they're trying, yeah. then you might want to yeah. check it out. I think there are a lot of brands who, um, they, they love the buzzwords. They love yeah. the fucking buzzwords. And I really I don't respect that. I think it's bullshit. And they, they love to say what's not in their products. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't give... I, I want to know what's in your products. I don't products. give a fuck if you don't have fucking... Parabens know, or something. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit. I do not give a fuck. Is your face powder, like, paraben-free, cruelty-free, all this free, but it only contains talc, cornstarch, and dimethicone? Yeah, because we're not having a good time here. Yeah, like, yeah, I agree. It it means it means nothing to me. I think Clarins is good for trying to get back into that younger demographic because they have fabulous products. Mm-hmm. I love Clarins. I've loved them for a long time, but I don't, I don't buy the bullshit. And and I don't think the people they're targeting will buy the bullshit either. No, and that's so that's that's the thing that's that's yeah. a bit weird about it. Yeah. Uh, they've also got spring makeup. Yes. So selfie ready. Mm-hmm. There are two glow to go blush and highlighter duo. So these are double ended, um, like highlighter and contour blush sticks. They're twenty six pounds each. Come in two shades. There's also a six pan eyeshadow palette. This is thirty two pounds, and it also contains some brow colors. Uh, it looks like there is a mascara as well. Yeah. Um, and is that the Beauty Flash Bar? No. No, the Instant, instant Poreless. Poreless. Pore Blurring mattif- Mattifying Primer. So that's uh, all in there, sort of selfie ready spring. It's, I think it's supposed to be like your quick. Yeah. Um, Go to like yeah, fast. Yeah, not too much yeah. coverage sort of stuff going yeah. on, which, yeah. you know, I that's- understand. All right. Clinique have launched a new face palette. It's in their um, cheek pop sort of range. So a lot of people love those blushes. I couldn't get behind them. They didn't really do it for me. Didn't do it? No, but I know a lot of people love it. It's their favorite formula. So they've got this limited edition palette. It's the cheek pop on the glow trio. Mm -hmm. It's got a highlighter, a blush and a bronzer in it. So it looks very pretty. Um, it's twenty nine fifty in the US. It's available now at Sephora, um, and it's supposed to be a multitasking, mistake proof palette with blush, bronzer, and highlighter. Multitasking. Mm. But then they tell you what they are. <laughs> 
Anyway, yes. <laughs> it's a bit strange. But yeah. you can see this lady modelling it. She looks very glowy. She does. It looks quite subtle. If you like that sort of look, uh, it's available now. Excellent. Cleona. Is that how we say it? Cleona. Cleona. Cleona Cosmetics. Cosmetics. We've got some new single eyeshadows. And these are fucking pretty. They're so nice, aren't they? So this almost uh, snuck past without us uh, grabbing it for beauty news. Mm. But I was like, we can't not grab them because no. the shades are so beautiful. I need Inferno. I think the same thing. I need That's to, what I want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I want make Inferno a, in my life. I think I might make an order. That's I might fair. try it this year. I also very, very much like Hex. Yeah, I was looking That's at that That's really too. beautiful. It's They're almost a, a grey toned purple with a yellow taupe. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Inferno it's and Hex. That Good. reminds me a little bit of I've got a uh, Inglot pigment that yes. has the same yeah. sort of colours, but this seems like it's more practical. Yeah, it, it is. Anyway. I can have two. It's yeah. fine. All right. So this is actually a new bundle from Cleona. And uh, this was, this is already released. And in the first week, it's uh, 60 Canadian dollars. Uh, in the second or from the second week onwards, it will be 70 Canadian dollars. So they sort of do that to the people that are really keen and that are big fans. They can get like a slight discount, yeah. which I think is a fair move. But this contains 13 shades. So yeah. 13 shades for 60 or 70 Canadian dollars is actually that very, is very good. really good. Yeah. Nine metallics or shimmers and four mattes. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to mention that some of these are existing shades from their line and some of them are new shades. So the new shades are Light Chaser, which is a silver beige metallic. Mm -hmm. Utopia, which is a cool toned pink shimmer with blue uh, glimmer, whatever glimmer is compared to shimmer. Um... Talisman, which is a medium toned pink metallic. Charmed, which is a salmon matte. Inferno, which is a red soft matte with a gold shift. I'm so interested in that. I'm getting that. Yeah, Lofty, which is a frosty lilac duochrome with a blue shift. Do you and just want to take the rest of the episode while I order these? Yes, <laughs> I'm sure. Let's do it. Um, and Orb, which is a vibrant lime green transformer. So those are the new ones. The other ones are just existing shades that work well with this collection yeah and i'm gonna say if this was in a palette i'd buy the shit out of it i'd buy the absolute buggery out of it it's now, really beautiful yeah but oh hey look i'm actually quite okay with this because i've got some z palettes that i'm like oh i want to keep the palettes i just don't need the case. i don't need the eyeshadows in it but yeah. because i'm keeping the palettes i'll just keep the eyeshadows yeah, 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 yeah. they're yeah. like going on 10 years old but yeah. who gives a fuck they're in there. And but I'm you know what you do. You I buy, dump them. You buy new ones and you filter in. Get rid of the old. I can old. do that now. So, in with the new, out yeah, with the old. I agree. So I think this is really, really, for me, it's very inspiring. This yeah. is a sort of color story that I've been wanting to see for a while. Does it like, you know, would I like to see other shades in here? Absolutely. But I think this is done so well. Yeah. So, um. It's actually a really good deal because these uh, retail for, like, I'm just having a look now, $6, $6.50, $7. So different so, depend on, yeah, depending on the I formula. Yeah, I think it, it's it's a good deal. Um, I think, yeah. Even at 70 Canadian dollars, it's a good deal. But it is. At it 60, is it's even better. So It is. And it's, is it available for 60 right now? Uh, let me double check. Or did we miss it? Did we miss it? It's available for 60. Do you want them? Yes, please. All right. Go on. I'll give it a go too. Never tried them before. No. This is what's bad about beauty news. We've been buying so yep. much stuff recently, guys. Yep. It's it's the worst. But I will say we've been really good recently with buying the things that really inspire us. True. And there's only one thing that we got burnt with, the MAC powders. And yep. not our fault. Totally false advertising. And I feel like we did a public service. We did. Like letting people know about yep. that. So we had to take one for the team. Fuck that buggery thing. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, so we're ordering these as we talk, which is great. Yep. Now let's move on to something okay, else. Okay, good. All right. Last week, this just missed the episode. This, I mm. think, uh, came out or was shown the day after we filmed, which is a couple of days before it was up. But ColourPop added liquid liners to their range. So this is sort of in the same sort of design as their new mascaras that they released the week prior. 
So these were released on the 15th of February. They're $8 each. And like I said, they're that BFF range. So the BFF mascaras, BFF liquid liners. Um, the shades that they released, um, there's a black, a white, a yellow, a forest green, a dark navy blue, a pink, and a red. And um, look, I think this is interesting because it's something that they haven't had in their range before. They have dabbled in pencil liners and also gel liners mm. and they did have a range of colors i do remember like kathleen lights reviewing them years ago and saying quite nice things about them but mm. then all of a sudden i think they were discontinued yeah so i don't know what happened but this is the first time they've released liquid liners and i think it's a good timing with the mascaras mm. i'm a little bit bummed they didn't release them at the same time because a lot of people would have placed an order for the mascaras and then and the liners, surprise yeah. the, mar the the liners go up the very next week and you're having to place another order yeah um a few people also pointed out that um they probably should have coordinated the colors of the mascaras with the liners yeah um and i think that would have been a really smart thing to do because if you really like the monochrome look of like a liner and then matching mascara would have been that but they've missed that opportunity yeah they have some colors in these that aren't in the mascaras and vice versa but if you did want to try some colored liquid liners uh, and you like color pop they're available excellent um we have something here you'll be forgiven if you look at this image and think it is from revolution beauty yep or it makeup not, revolution yes uh, this is from CoverGirl. Yes. Um, this is the... So this is called the Her Majesty Revolution Eyeshadow Palette. Yeah, so it's releasing at Walmart on the 8th of April. So this is just a really early sneak peek. Um, I think they did this because we all know Katy Perry is one of the spokespeople for all the faces of CoverGirl. Mm -hmm. And she was at the Grammys, so she was wearing it. Now, we don't really know what colors are in it, but you can see some soft pinks. Um, and, I, yeah, I, I think a few people think this is a little bit cheeky, making it look like the font is pretty much the same. Mm. Have they what not, they have they not <laughs> trademarked that? I like, will. shame on Makeup Revolution if they haven't trademarked that. Yeah, I, I don't but know. But it could be that they haven't trademarked the word see, revolution. Yeah, I... and. Okay, so it was called Her Majesty's Revolution. Yeah, palette. well, that's what oh, they've got in the description. Yeah. On here, on the actual palette, it says CoverGirl Revolution Eyeshadow Palette. Yeah, but that might be because you know how they release a certain range and then they have like the Her, Ma Her Majesty variant, and then the yeah, next yeah. time will be like. Her Majesty's Corgis. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And then it'll be brown tones. Like, you know mm. what I mean? Like, it, it might just be the Revolution makeup palette yeah. range and then they have different variants Pink. on it. Revolutionary. Yeah, revolutionary. But yeah, I'm really surprised that Makeup Revolution hasn't trademarked. I, I suppose... I suppose they wouldn't... Well, in, I, in, in I makeup you like, could. I feel like if your brand is called Makeup Revolution or Revolution Beauty or whatever, because yeah. you've got so many, like, variants yeah. of, of it... I feel like they potentially could have some basis for... Not if they haven't trademarked it, though. No, but for trademarking Yes, it. they yeah. totally could. In yeah. just the makeup industry, absolutely. Yeah, but they clearly yeah. haven't, and they've got around it. Interesting. It's interesting. And they're both UK brands, so it's interesting. Anyway, we've got some new mm. stuff with Flower Beauty. Mm -hmm. These are the Petal Pout Lip Masks. I know, they're a bit strange, aren't they? Aren't they? That, when I saw the photo, I was like, what are these vials? <laughs> you know when you watch too many sci-fi shows and yeah. you're like, okay, they, they have to put like some serum, like they have to like yeah. inject, inject it. Inject it, yeah. Go, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I kind of thought these were. Um, but these come in six shades and they're a treatment for smooth, soft, healthy looking lips. Um, and I don't know. I don't know why they're coloured. I feel like if you're going to have a... Like a treatment. Like, I like yeah. to use lip treatments overnight. Yeah. I don't need it to be a berry colour. No. Anyway, they're US $9 and they're available now at Flower Beauty and Ulta. So, if you like the idea of like a tinted, I guess like a lip gloss with treatment, treatment stuff in it. Yeah. Yeah, then you can... It's got, it. it's got... It's um, got... It's in, it's infused with nourishing mango and cocoa butter. Okay. So, I don't think not... that's... 
I it's not know. revolutionary. It's not that, is, doesn't treat that much. No, it's just, it doesn't. It just stops your lips from being fucking dry buttholes. Pretty much what lip balms and lip glosses do. Every lip balm and lip gloss is going to do that. So, yay. Confusing. $9. Yes. Um, Good Molecules. So, this is a brand that we saw pop up recently in the Beautylish Lucky Bags. Oh, that's and right. People that were I like, think. oh, what's this thing? Yeah. So, there were two products that were showing up in boxes. There was an eye thing and some sort of face serum, I think. Anyway, um, I didn't manage to wake up at 4 oh, yeah. a.m. to buy that box. So, you know, Oops, missed Daisy. out on that. Um, but essentially, what Good Molecules is is a brand that is created by Boomtish Beauty Lich. Yes. Uh, so we knew this was going to happen. Because yeah, we called it. We, we called predicted it. it. We predicted it. Trust I'm, me. I'm surprised gonna... that that is the prediction that has come I know. Through repeatedly. So consistently. Um, so basically, uh, this is meant to be simple skincare that works at a fair price. So, so it's like the ordinary. the ordinary. They've taken, they've gone, okay, the ordinary was really successful. Let's create our own version. Correct. Which is kind of funny because I watched quite a few um, Lucky Bag openings and a lot of people are like, okay, the value of the bag is this. Mm. And then there's this also serum or this whatever. Yeah. I don't know what the value is. It could be anything from, you know, 20 bucks to like 60 bucks. And it ends up being the, I'm pretty $9, sure, $8? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, Cause I saw the eye serum a lot. I don't think there's a single product that's over $12. I think the most expensive product is the super peptide serum, but we'll go through them quickly. So there's a hyaluronic acid serum for $6, a niacinamide serum, $6, overnight exfoliating treatment uh, with AHA and BHA acids, that one is $6. There's squalane oil, $8, the super peptide serum, which is 12, the ultra hydrating facial oil for $10, and a wake up eye serum for $8. You can buy the whole set for $56, which is the same price as buying everything individually. So there is no saving there. But if you look, if you're a bit extra and you get very excited by skincare, which I know there's many people like that, um, and you want to try it all, you can buy it as a bundle or you can pick and choose. So the benefit is you don't have to add everything individually yes, to, the cart. to the cart. You just go, I know I want one of everything, buy the bundle. Or if you're like, I really want to try a couple of things, but they're out of stock. So the only way I can get them is buying the bundle. I think that's a bit cheeky. It's a bit Anastasia cheeky. Anastasia Beverly Hills, I think, does that. They do do that. No, yes. no. Natasha Denona oh, do that. Oh, that's right. They yep. do that. So you kind of go, oh, I really want this particular I, eyeshadow I really, palette. really want the, the gold palette. Yeah, but, but it's the gold out of stock. palette's out of stock. But you can so. buy it with the Tropic palette, like you're buying them both separately, but you buy you have to buy them together. Anyway, cheeky. fucking annoying. Cheeky bastards. Cheeky. Um, Anyway, I, I actually do, even though we sound a little bit, like, sassy, possibly, we don't often intend to be as sassy as No, no, I, I think, look, fuck that. I'm not taking that as sassy. We are being honest. No, we, no, no. But We give our feelings. We do, but what I wanted to say was, even though we get a little bit, like, we sound very critical oh, yeah, and judgmental, yeah, yeah. I actually think this is a really smart idea, and I yeah, do want so to see I. more brands create yeah. affordable skincare. I agree. The issue I have with the ordinary skincare, and also probably this range, is that what people don't realize is that when you buy a serum, it's often a multitude of different ingredients that all work together to, to support your skin yep. and yeah. And to, you know, hydrate and do this and this might slightly dry out your skin. So they're adding in this to really combat to that. Ba yeah, whereas, balance it yeah. Out. Whereas these really simple serums and it's the same as the ordinary to get the same effect of using a complicated serum. You have to use like five serums in yep. the one step. Yeah. So even though it looks like you're getting really affordable skincare and if you do want to add a niacinamide to your skincare range, it, it might be a good way to do it. But if you wanted that to be your only serum, it's not a good way to go. So you do have to be a little bit careful with these. You kind of go, okay, yeah, this this one serum, it might be six bucks and it might be for hydration, but that's all it does. Yeah. If you need it to do other things and support your skin in other ways, they simply don't do it. So yeah. there, there is a benefit to them, but there is also a cautionary yeah. tale to them. I personally feel like potentially brands like this, I don't know enough about good molecules to really put them in this box, but with the ordinary, mm -hmm. I actually think that those products 
should be targeted more at people who are uh, like borderline experts with their personal yeah, skincare true. To, treatment. To actually know how to mix them all together, yeah. you actually have to read a guide. Yeah, you you have, have to have a guide on their website yeah. to be like this negates the effect of this you yep. can't mix this with this that's and correct all of a sudden or you like, must put this on before yeah. this otherwise you're not going to get the benefit it's a waste yeah so i actually feel like although like don't get me wrong i love the idea of the ordinary i haven't tried anything yet i will one day um i do feel like if you don't know what you're doing and you're like someone told me i should get a a chemical exfoliant for anti-aging and you go with this eight dollar AHA or BHA or mm-hmm. combination of the two and you just start using it and there's no other skin support you're like why is my skin dry why yeah, is my skin flaky correct. this is a horrible product so you d- I d- do feel like you you have to have some if not quite a bit of experience with how your skin responds to products and also what your skin needs to support those it takes products. a lot of research yeah. it does and i feel like if you if you do a lot of research i think you can use those products really well and yeah, i absolutely. really like to use the ordinary niacinamide in my skincare routine along with other more like mm-hmm. complicated serums and moisturizers and whatnot but i do think i like the what i like about the ordinary is not so much that they're simple ingredients because I actually don't like that. I find yeah. that really frustrating. But I like the fact that they don't pay for marketing. Yes. So yeah. and they don't really put much um, much cost into packaging. Yeah. So they keep it very streamlined, lined, and simple. So they're not adding on the costs yeah. of marketing, packaging, all that kind of stuff. Because that's often what makes Longcom's serum really expensive. Yeah. It's not what's actually inside. It's the um, the, cost, packaging the packaging, the, the marketing, marketing, all that and, ridiculous yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like if, you know, and, and this isn't just me grabbing a number out of the air, but it's like if you could buy a can of Coca-Cola, but you didn't have to pay for their billions and billions of dollars of marketing each year, the can of Coke will probably be worth like 20 cents and that'd still make a profit. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, I like that idea of cutting out the marketing costs and doing that, but I don't think you need to cut out the complicated um, formulas. I agree. Like I would prefer to pay maybe twenty bucks and have one that does a lot of things yep. than have this is just nice in a mind. This yep. is just vitamin yep. C. Good I, luck to you. I am like you know we like you said okay maybe we come across a little bit critical about it but I will say I am really really glad to see another brand bringing more affordable skincare yep. like this to the market. Although it's not exactly what I look for in affordable skincare it does interest me yeah and i i do like that very slowly they are paving the way for more of this yeah i agree with that's that. great all right kylie cosmetics kylie has been looking a little bit i'm gonna say sultry but <laughs> dead um at the camera but she's sneak peeking something new and we don't know yet what it is a lot of people are thinking it's loose powders um i think that is a fair assumption yeah. Um, what else can you get in a tub? You can probably get gel products, whatever. But I think loose powder makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and hopefully as I'm talking, you have an update on the screen. That would be great. Because we don't know yet. We don't know. Um, from Laura Mercier, we have some new products. Um, we've got the Caviar Chrome Veil Lightweight Liquid Eye Colors. So these are coming in six shades. It's meant to be a long-wearing shimmer liquid eye color. Um, And there are also some new chrome caviar stick shades. So there's six... six, Oh, wow. Six shades. Six shades. There's six shades. um, And it includes the two limited edition duochrome ones that we spoke about a little while ago. Yes, we did. Um, We're not sure if these are going to remain limited edition or if they are being included in, like, the permanent line. Uh, But, again, there are six shades. So there's Beam and Rush. They were the two duochromes that we saw. And there's also Magnetic Pink, Metallic Taupe, Intense Moonlight, and Intense Intense Amethyst. Which is interesting because Moonlight is an existing one. Mm Mm-hmm. And I guess also Amethyst is an existing one, but they're making it more intense. Intense, yeah. They're pretty damn intense as they are. So they are. It's interesting. They're, 
They're intense. They're really intense. <laughs> they are. They are. Oh, so man. anyway, if you like Laura Mercier, um, there's some more eye products coming your way. And if you're sitting there and you're from Australia and you're going, well, we can't get the shit anyway. Uh, yes, you can, Dal. Come and see into Mecca. Yeah. So this wasn't a very well-kept secret. No. Um, so l- early last year, I think it was in... Uh, oh no, it was by, I think, uh, end of financial year. Yes. Um, they took all of Laura Mercier out of Australia, which was really frustrating because um, a lot of the international websites wouldn't ship to mm-hmm. Australia. Like they put a ban on Laura Mercier because yep. they had, anyway. Um, anyway, they took them all out of, what was they were in David Jones and other stores, yep. Adore Beauty and whatnot. Um, and. Shortly after, we heard little rumblings that they're going to be coming to Mecca, and it has been confirmed. They're mm-hmm. releasing uh, in Mecca on the 26th of February. So, um, yeah, they didn't leave the market for very long. Mm. No. You know what I'm really keen to see about this? If their prices will remain extremely competitive with they the were. US market. That's why I feel like they pulled out. I, because I think that... The prices yeah. were even... Like, I think sometimes I'd buy a powder or something, and you look in the US and it's like 50-something bucks. Sometimes they were cheaper to buy And they were Australia. cheaper to buy them in Australia. So I, that's why I think they pulled out. They're like, our price points were actually probably losing money their gift sets like say a gift set was forty dollars in the u.s it'd be forty dollars in australian dollars which is unheard of so mm. i always liked laura mercier because of that yeah. fact yeah you'd be getting the high-end sort of products at a really decent uh yeah price and they never bothered increasing it so i feel like they're going to really increase it this time which is going to yeah. be annoying because mecca if they have exclusivity to a brand which they will probably have with this, um, they take the US price, add taxes, convert it, and then that's what they sell it for. And they yep. revisit, like they uh, sort of change the prices every, I think, quarter or something yep. to reflect the US price. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot more expensive than it used to be. Yeah. I um, I don't think it's going to save Mecca. <laughs> Save uh, Laura sorry, Mercier. save Laura Mercier. I don't think they need to save it though, because it's been such like it's been a brand that's out for a long time. Yeah. Any losses they make is just a tax deduction. Yeah, it's true. All right, we've seen a new sneak peek of a Mac upcoming collab. Mm. Now this is with the Aladdin movie, mm. not the animated movie that we fell in love with as no. kids, but the new live action one with uh, Will Smith being the weird looking genie. Yeah, I... Yeah, it's I, weird. I don't... Mm. I I'll watch boycott. it, but I'm not... No, I'll watch <laughs> no, it. I well, boycott. we watched the, the Beauty and the Beast one on a flight. We did. I'll watch the Aladdin one on a flight. Yeah, that's I'm fair. not going that's to the fair. movies to see No, no. no. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be... Just, I don't know, a range mm. with limited edition packaging for um, probably the launch of the movie. In this picture, you see uh, the lipstick shade all fired up. That's an existing shade. So mm. um, Very disappointing. Yeah. Like, a lot of people are excited about this. I am not holding out if too much hope. If they had a compact that you opened up and it had a beautiful highlighter in it, not a highlight powder but like an actual highlighter and it, it's saying i will show you the world what was, oh, what's it called um whole new world whole new world i would buy the shit out of that but i don't want your all fired up pink lipstick that's thank fair. you that's bye fair. okay last week or yeah last week there was a sephora france showcase there was also one in sydney yeah so we weren't invited no that's fine but we will throughout this episode show some upcoming things that are brands stocked in Sephora France or Sephora Australia um, because we've seen some sneak peeks of things that are coming. A couple of things from Makeup Forever. Firstly, we have seen a new um, finishing spray. It's the Mist and Fix O2, O2, so Oxygen. It's called the Makeup Setting Spray Long Lasting and Moisturizing 12 Hour. Mm. So it looks like it comes in two sizes. There we go. We've also seen a new palette. Now, this palette is an interesting one. Um, last year they did release uh, two, uh, was it a, they did release two palettes, I'm pretty sure. One they mainly released in Europe and then like a week later oh, they released right. it worldwide. Yes. Yeah. And I saw that on sale in Maya, Melbourne just the other day. Mm-hmm. Or was it David Jones? David Jones, just the other day. So it's still around. But this is sort of like the same sort of vibe, but 
a completely new palette. Yeah. Which is good. It's called Let's Gold. And this actually has 18 shades in it. So you've got three like rows. Um, the top row looks matte. The second row looks like a shimmer. And then the bottom row looks like a glitter. So I think this is really interesting. I think the tones that they've used is very on trend. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I punched it up a little bit with more color. So another thing that's quite interesting about it, and you can see in the video, is um, it comes with like eye look charts. But it actually, you can place it over the pan and see exactly which ones you're using. Yeah. So I thought that was a cool sort of, if you're an intro, like if you're new to eyeshadow palettes and you're not sure how to combine them, mm. uh, it's a really easy sort of way to do it. But um, yeah, so this is coming soon. Um, before we move on from that palette, I actually, I've got to say this because it's yes. really fucking annoying the shit out of me. I didn't realize that they had that thing where you, like you've got the, the lookbook and you put it over the eyeshadows. Yeah. Like, the eyeshadows have names, yeah. which is so great. Like, I hate it when palettes don't have the eyeshadow names. I, oh, is Makeup Forever, like, marketing to beginners now? Look, yes, I do agree that that's, that is a strange thing. Yeah. Because Makeup Forever has always placed themselves as being a makeup artist yeah. brand. And it used to only be sold in pro stores. Yeah. And now they're selling them in Sephora. Yeah. Other places. I feel like this is the same thing with Clarins. Yeah, they yeah. They really need to get people... They realize that there are there's only a certain percentage of makeup artists in the world. Mm -hmm. And there's a much larger percentage of people that wear makeup. Yes, just consumers. Consumers. Yeah. So I think this is where you're starting to see brands that used to claim to be pro mm. or makeup artists only. Yeah. And they are now marketing to the people that are starting out yes and, and i i definitely think that they should market to consumers mm -hmm. because there's a massive market if you are a makeup brand you would be a fool not to go after that consumer market mm -hmm. i just think having like a big long thing with like how to do an eye look and then an extra bit that folds out and goes over the three eyeshadows like yeah, but I look. I I, to I totally agree with you, and I think I I understand where you're coming from, and I don't look at those. I, I don't need. I don't, no, no. I don't, I don't want those guides. No, personally. No, neither do but I. But I know a lot of people do like them, and I know a lot of people can't visualize how things work together. Yeah. Unless you show them how to visualize yeah. it. Yeah. So not everyone thinks the way that we might think. I might look at a palette and go, oh, that would look good with that. And I'm keen to try it with this. Yeah. But not everyone sees things that way. So I'm not going to start belittling people that like no, the idea. I'm not trying. Would I use it? No, no. I'm not trying to belittle people. I just don't understand why you can have, like, it on the, the information sheet mm. or the eye look, it shows the eye in three different steps and you can see it's made up of three different colors. Yes. I just think that extra bit of paper with three little holes cut in it is excessive and kind of like gimmicky. Why do we need that? Yeah. For, I think for a lot of people it would be gimmicky, but I've, I've seen a lot of people say in the response to this, that's a really cool idea. That's really helpful. Okay. So even though it might not help you, yeah. there are a lot of people that like the idea yeah. and you kind of go, well, if you're going to put eye looks that no one even reaches for because they don't give a fuck, <laughs> yeah. like you may as well make it more accessible and go, okay, look, and if you actually move it across, maybe you can visualize seeing, like I, I see people watch my channel and they've been watching for years and they're like, I bought my first palette and I have no idea how to mix more than one shade together yeah. or two shades together. It can this be daunting. helps visualize that for people. And I, I think that's fair. You know, do we need it? No. It's not, but some people like it. But yeah, it is definitely sort of starting eyeshadow palette people that love that. Makeup artists, if you need that help, you probably shouldn't be a makeup artist. No, definitely not. Marc Jacobs, we have the Velvet Primer. This is a conditioning eyelash primer with peptides and vitamin B uh, to improve the look of uh, your lashes. Yeah. And it's now available at Marc Jacobs Beauty and Sephora for US $26. A lot of people here are saying, eh, they're copying Fenty. And I'm like, this packaging design has been around with Marc Jacobs before Fenty was even a brand. Yep. So if anyone's copied anyone, it's the other way around. Yep. All right, Milk Makeup have released a new range of lipsticks. These are revamped Demi Matte lipsticks. So... 
Um, they're featuring existing and new shades. They've just clearly revamped the formula, which, look, you know, if you like the formula, oops. But if you didn't like the formula, maybe give it another crack. Mm -hmm. They've added three new shades and all the rest of the existing shades. Yeah. Um, so Hype, which is a cool smoky mauve, is a new shade. Skills, which is a warm peachy nude, is a new shade. And Juices... Uh, which is a warm, rosy nude, is a new shade. So these are now available for $24. US Something else from the Sephora France showcase was a little sneak peek from NARS. We see some six-pan eyeshadow palettes here. Um, and up towards the back, potentially some face palettes. Uh, we don't know anything about these other than this image. Yes. I've also seen um, an image online, which is an eyeshadow and a face palette. Mm -hmm. These are spring palettes. So I think this is the new spring release coming very, yeah. very soon. And it looks like there's two variations of the face palette. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. They're called Fever. It's a Fever Dream Collection, I believe. Um, yeah, it's... A they should just make it a bit easier, Nas. Just make a big release. Like, yeah. here's, here's what it is. The and end. Don't, you don't need to speculate. Here are all the items. Done. Mm -hmm. But they don't do that. No. Um, we've got also a new, another thing that we saw. Um, Natasha Denona sneak peeked it. And then we also saw it at the Australian um, Savora Showcase. So this is a reformulation of the Foundation X. So it's, I think it's now going to be called the Foundation X Plus. It's coming in 20 shades. It's a new improved formula. So we don't have any release dates, but we can see the range here. And this was shown at, like I said, the Australian Sephora Showcase. A lot of people are not happy with the shade range. It mm -hmm. uh, looks like there's maybe two or three deeper shades and all the rest are medium or light. And a lot of people are questioning why they needed to reformulate this yep, because a lot of people like this particular foundation. So, this I foundation don't... has been out for like five minutes. Well, maybe <sighs> it didn't do very well, but a lot of people are saying that they like it. So I'm, I, I've never used it, so I can't comment. But it's been, yeah, yeah. Look, sometimes brands do this. They'll add like a little plus or a two or something when um, there's either an update in an ingredient. Mm. So, for example, yeah, there's new technology out that has sort of made that um, better or increased the, I don't know, whatever. Um, or sometimes if an ingredient is no longer available and they have to tweak the formula to fix that, or to change that, mm. they don't want to sell the new formula as though it's old formula because a lot of people who might have allergies or skin concerns will buy it thinking it's the same thing and then being surprised that it's different. So mm. sometimes brands do this from a practical point of view, not because there was anything particularly wrong with the product. So yeah. we'll have to wait until we hear what they've done to it, which mm. we don't know yet. There is also a new concealer coming soon. Um, we really don't know anything about that. We just know new concealer. Mm -hmm. All right. There was a sneak peek from Nikki Tutorials of this. It says 2019 isn't ready. Um, and they look to be eyeshadow swatches. People are speculating that this um, could potentially be a like a palette coming from Marc Jacobs that yes. Nikki has played some part in. And a lot of people, like a lot, the overwhelming majority, um, seem to assume that it was with Morphe. And, Morphe um, swatches wouldn't look that nice. No. Let's just put it out there. And N Nikki did respond. She said, I'm here to assure you it's not Morphe. Um, so there we go. I think Marc Jacobs is definitely the best bet. Yeah. These look like finishes that would be in Marc Jacobs' palettes and because she is now like the brand ambassador or whatever she, whatever the term was, mm. um, yeah, it makes perfect sense to kick that off with a new palette. Yeah. I, I think it's funny saying 2019 isn't ready yet. I'm going to take this from both stance. We are ready. Yeah. And uh, if you honestly think we aren't ready, 
maybe the colours aren't right. <laughs> That's fair. All right, we got new news from Ole Henriksen. So they said you asked, we delivered Meat Banana Bright face primer. So they had the Banana Bright eye cream um, and now they've got a face primer to sort of pair with it. So if you really liked that eye cream, you might really like the primer. Uh, it's got vitamin C. Um, and it's supposed to improve and extend makeup wear, blur infection, infections. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it could do that. Oh, oh, shit. that was blur great. imperfections. Oh my God. Hydrate. And it's supposed to be for all skin tones. Excellent. Um, it's a primer. Why wouldn't yeah. it be for all skin tones? <laughs> Jeez. But anyway, I <laughs> like uh, this is your bullshit. Tell me what's not in there as yeah. well. Yeah. Does it have banana in it? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is available at Sephora and OleHenriksen.com on the 21st. So it's out as you're sort of watching this. Do these smell like banana? Because I just think there's that would be nothing grosser. Yeah. I'm just not, smearing banana no, goop on your face. No. I'm Give not me banana custard. Yeah, but I don't want to fucking put it on my face. I had a banana donut the other day. It was pretty damn good. Yeah. All right. So we have something new here from Physicians Formula. This is a a new primer. It is the um, Soft Light Blurring Primer. It adds a soft focus, ultra smooth airbrush finish to the skin. It looks like a foundation. It does. It looks like foundation in one shade. Yeah, I was really... I actually thought this was a foundation. So did I. Um, it's not. Okay. So it's supposed to be a universally flattering, soft, soft focused primer that, that smooths, absorbs and protects to deliver an ultra smooth airbrush finish. Ultra smooth, ultra smooth. I say it a lot. Mm. Um, and it's now available at Physicians Formula and Walgreens for fourteen ninety five US. Ultra smooth? Ultra smooth. Tell me what's not Soft in Soft focus, ultra smooth. <laughs> um, from Spectrum uh, Collections, we have another collaboration with Disney. Get ready for it. I know you've all been waiting for this. You're so excited. Don't shit your pants. It's a Mickey Mouse collection. To celebrate the 91st <laughs> anniversary of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and then oh, next year it'll shit. be 92nd anniversary. Yeah, yeah, Look, shit. I'm I'm starting to get ready to never ever speak of Mickey Mouse again. Yep. Um, but they did last year release a Minnie Mouse collection. They did, yeah. So I feel just, like yeah. they waited until the rights to the Mickey Mouse was cheaper. Yeah, probably. Because it wasn't the anniversary yeah. thing going on. Yeah. And they've just made a black, white, and gold sort yeah. of collection. Now, they always release sort of a similar thing. Makeup bags, um, brush kits that come with makeup bags. And this is no different. Uh, if you love Mickey, some people are interested. If you mm. don't care, then all good. But it's launching on the 28th of February at 9 a.m. So, uh, And it'll be available in the U.S. at Pretty Little Thing. So mm. if you really like this, go for it. I love uh, it's, how got a, the, it's got a bum bag or fanny yeah, pack. I love how the the hands on this bag are holding the brushes. I fucking, yeah, that's I actually it. quite good. I love I would, it. But would you ever put no. the brushes there? No, no probably I wouldn't. not. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't use it. But I like what they've done there with that little hand. It's cute. Fair. Yeah. All right. From Too Faced, we have seen their new spring collection. Now, this might look quite sim- uh, familiar because not last year, but the year before. I think their spring palette was this natural eyes palette. Mm. It was like sort of pinky. I think it had bunnies on it. And it was a big sort of nude so it's got 30 shades in it, and um, it, the other one was sort of pastels and nudes and whatever. And we've seen it again. Mm. Uh, well, the second one. So the last one was Natural Love. This one's Natural That's Lust. right. It was yeah. na- well, I, look, yeah. that makes more sense. Natural yeah. Love and Natural Lust. Yeah. So, yeah. So, look, some people don't like this. Some people do like this. Um, it is also coming with a Natural Lust bronzer which is actually kind of cool. It's got like a matte bronzer portion and then more of a shimmery bronzer portion. I like this. And it's in the shape shape of a peacock. Peacock, yeah. I think it's kind of cool. I really like the packaging too. I think it's a little bit uh, old world glam It's very vintage. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, They're also, and I feel like this is a little bit out of place, they're bringing out the Coco Contour Palette. Now, if you can see, these are all, they look to me to be all matte. Mm. Um, you've got a light highlight, medium highlight, deep highlight, light contour, medium contour, deep contour. Now, a lot of people think this is really cool. And I, I, I'm not going to tell anyone that they are wrong because the formula of these sort of 
um, chocolate bronzers are fantastic. For me, they should have made duos or sold these in singles yeah. because I think the year of the um, contour palette for three different people has passed. This was popular 2015, 2016, where the Kat Von D shade and light palettes were like all the rave and the Anastasia Beverly Hills, um, you know, contour palettes were all the rave. And then people realized, oh, actually, most of this doesn't actually suit my skin tone because I have one skin tone, not three. And I'm not going to use a peach highlight anywhere on my face. So I think this was, this is strange. I think the formula would be really good. Um, I think this is this missed the boat. This would have been selling off the shelves three, four years ago. I agree. But right now I don't, I think this, this should have been in duos. Yeah. Um, so I think this is really strange. And I think if the, if these highlights were shimmery, that'd be a little bit more versatile. Like a highlighter you can sort of wear as a blush topper. If you've got fairer skin or if you had deeper skin, you can use a light shimmery highlighter, you know, as a highlighter, but as mattes, this is very strange. So, um, this is coming alongside the collection and it's coming soon. We don't know yet when this is being released, but um, I would say that it's definitely in the next couple of months. Mm. I wanted to point out, though, that this palette, two-thirds of it, beige. Yeah, I don't... It's not good. The last two columns, interesting. The first four columns, no. Cut that down to one column. That is a, not a good palette. And a lot of people are questioning um, the sort of the names mm. because, once again, like I understand that this is natural lust, which is different to natural love. Um, but once again, that whole cute packaging and then it having names like, you know, Sex Drive and, I don't know, Peep Show and Pins Spank down, Me. and Blindfolded. Yeah. Come so, and get it. Yeah. I think... Oops, a daisy. <laughs> That's what well, you should have called the palette. Yeah. <clears throat> All tied up. Like, I think these things, like, it just, it does go with the last name. Yeah. I just think it's a little bit disjointed. But I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a very successful palette. <laughs> That's what I think. Fair. YSL. These are new Touch a Clat Shimmer Sticks in five shades. So we did talk about Touch a Clat being... An illuminator and then they brought out a concealer version now they have a stick version of the illuminator but they look like they're more shimmery they do yeah. these look more highlighty um, so there's five shades light gold light rose rose gold bronze and copper they are available now on YSL Beauty and they're retailing for 34 US dollars each yeah I think the one thing that I think is interesting about these is they've got the little Y on the top I know it's cute even though that is going to wear Disappear, away yeah. after your first use but i think that's a cute touch uh the last thing i think we're talking about yes um so at the sephora france showcase we saw an upcoming zoeva collection so um this looks like it's melody maybe mm. um it's got some soft colors maybe like a steel gray nudes maybe it looks like olive greens really yeah. soft olive greens some shimmery lip glosses and yeah that's coming soon. That looks like that's the next Zoeva palette. Oh, and before we forget, even though this is not in alphabetical order, we forgot to talk about a new uh, Revolution palette. So this is Makeup Revolution or Revolution Beauty. And look, I could be mistaken for Cover Girl. I know, the, right? The font is exactly the same. But um, yeah, this is a new 15 pan palette. It's the Foil Frenzy Creation palette. So uh, these are all... Highly shimmery foiled eyeshadows. Uh, it's supposed to be, you know, rich in pigmentation. It's available now. Eight pounds, eight ninety nine euros, ten US dollars, or fourteen Australian dollars. Um, and you can just see the shades there. So if you wanted to inject some metallic y kind of shades into your collection, Makeup Revolution has done it. It's time to dedicate this episode of Beauty News to a Beauty News VIP and our Beauty News VIP for the week is Maddie. Yay! Thank you Maddie for supporting Beauty News and thank you to everyone who supports Beauty News in whichever way you choose to do it. Yes. Okay. If you've made it to the end, I've come up with an emoji. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a peacock. Ah, yes. Because it's the only thing Too Faced can get right. That's fair. Mm. 
And they also had a shade name called Peacocking. They did. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Beauty News. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what the fuck is that cat doing? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what is that cat doing? It's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, shit. But he got his guts through, and there's just, like, the hips. The hips are too wide. <laughs>